Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of the Portfolio Management Package. So this is a library that's been released recently to help analysts to investigate portfolio and stock market. Today, we're gonna release a new feature. It's called the Momentum Strategy. So right off the bat, first question is, what is the Momentum Strategy? The Momentum Strategy actually originated from this paper by Carl Hart all the way back in 1997. The name of paper is On Persistence in Mutual Fund Performance. Uh, it's actually published in the Journal of Finance, which is a pretty prestigious journal. So they're actually telling a very simple story. They basically said every month you can balance your portfolio. And how you do it is you calculate all the stock returns and simply sort them ascending order from top to bottom. And then whatever that is the highest, you pick that stock. Whatever is the lowest, you short sell that stock. Uh, so you can do it by different brackets, quintile, quartile, you name it. And then you can create a portfolio arbitrage by longing the top quintile stocks and also the shorting the bottom quintile stocks. And in doing so, you'll be able to create a positive alpha that beats the benchmark with high statistical significance. So with that being said, what does that look like? Here's some technical details. You start with the market model, meaning that whatever return that you're trying to measure, it can be measured by the market. And then we have the famous Pharma French three-factor model. We have the market factor, the high minus low, uh, that indicates whether you are a growth stock or a value stock. And then you have the third factor, small minus big, and that is the market capitalization. So on top of three-factor model, Carhart actually introduced a four-factor model. And that fourth factor is notated here in the last one. This is the up minus down. And it precisely captures the stock return. So with that being said, that's the model. Here's the technical detail. And then with that being said, we can jump into the code. So this is what the code looks like. You can use this line of code to import the library, and you'll be able to have this efficient portfolio library. And then all you gotta do is enter a list of stocks that you like. For example, I have here Apple, Microsoft, Google, Netflix, IBM, so on and so forth. And then you can coin a range of a start date and end date, and then you can pick an interval. The go-to interval that I recommend is one month. Since there are 12 stocks here, you can probably pick the top 25%, top 30%. Let's just say you wanna pick top three stocks. So you run this code, it will give you the following visualization. Right off the bat, there are two lines. The red line is a portfolio. The blue line is a benchmark. Benchmark is simply calculated as the average of all the stock that you entered. Now, of course, uh, the assumption here is if I enter a stock and you enter a bunch of stocks, they will probably be very different. And that's okay. That is the exercise that you're gonna have to do as analysts. And then on top of that, if you want to be truly robust about the performance, and the analysis, and you can, of course, enter all of the stocks from the stock market and conduct your analysis from there. But in this case, let's just enter 12 stocks. Every month, we're going to pick three stocks. So if I zoom in, I will be able to see this kind of visualization. Every month, we'll be able to see three stock recommendations. For example, here, I see Netflix, Costco, Oracle. Next month, I see Tesla, Meta, Google. And next month, I see Meta, Visa, Disney. And then how it works is every month, it will compute the stock return of all of the 12 stocks that I enter, sort them from top to bottom, and then pick the top three stocks. And the theory here is actually very simple. The theory here says king says the king, right? If you zoom back out, the stock market always inch to the top right corner. You want to pick the best stocks, and best stocks is rated by stock returns. And whoever is the best stock return, let's hold that. So that's what this red line is saying. That's based on the momentum strategy. Now, on the top left corner of this visualization, there are a couple of summary statistics. Let me walk you through that. First of all, you can compute the Sharpe ratio. Sharpe ratio is defined as the expected return over volatility. You can compute that number for benchmark as well as for the portfolio. On top of that, there's expected return. That is the mean number. And then also standard deviation. That is the volatility. Uh, of course, you can do that for both the benchmark as well as the portfolio as well. And here we actually see that the expected return, which is the mean number for the portfolio, is 0.0262. And that pretty much rounds up to about 
Now, some people might say, well, 2.6% is uh, kind of like a small number. Well, it depends on your perspective. Here, I have a couple of exercises to show you that it might not be a small number. So you can do a 12 month calculation or you can roll it out for 50 years and see what the returns are on $1,000. So you do the simple math, $1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0262, roll that out for 12 months, that actually gives you $1,364 in just one year from 1000 bucks. I would say that's a pretty decent growth. It's actually not that bad. Same thing, if you can maintain 2.6% on monthly basis for 50 years, that will actually give you this gigantic number here, Hold on to your hats. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that will be five point six billion dollars. That's not a small number. That is actually a big number. If you can maintain two point six percent on a monthly basis for fifty years, you are doing pretty well. You should give yourself a thumb up. You can open up your hedge fund, and you should be consider yourself doing a great job. So this exercise also let go our philosophy a little bit, which I'm going to share with you guys, and that's what we're aiming for, which is. We want to make smaller steps, incremental steps, but for the long run, for 50 years, 100 years, things like that. With that being said, hopefully you like this episode. Hopefully this episode sheds some light, as well as put this tool at the tip of your finger. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.